Good morning, everybody. I'm here in Epcot today to find out what crowds are really like and what you need to do to make the most out of your day. Let's go find out. Good morning, everybody. We are here in Epcot today, and we are going to see what the crowds are really looking like. And as you can see, the lines are pretty darn long this morning. If the parking lot is any indication, today is gonna to be a pretty long day. So first tip of the day, never go to the first lines you get to. Always go to the shorter lines, even if that means walking down a little bit further, because it'll definitely save you time. So I'm gonna go hunt for that short line now. Okay, I have walked all the way down to the end, which I have not done in a long time. So I'm excited to see what today looks like. It's looking busy. Thank you. Enjoy your day. Thank, Thank you. you. Next, please. One over here. One over there. There we go. So that only took me about four and a half, five minutes, which is not bad at all. But considering most days I just walk straight into the park, definitely longer than usual. Listen to that music, baby. That's Epcot. It is a Thursday, so middle of the week. And there's a Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween party tonight over in Magic Kingdom. So I'm gonna see if that impacts the crowds and if maybe because it is October, the holiday crowds are already starting to pick up. We're gonna do a little science, a little research today to find out if what crowds look like as holidays really start to pop up here in Disney World. So as I'm heading in, I haven't even checked wait times yet today, but the crowds are feeling crazy. And how do I know that is because if you guys have seen any of the other crowd videos I've done, of course, I always talk about pinch points. If you haven't had the chance to watch those videos yet, what are pinch points? Pinch points are basically areas where crowds can really gather up and almost always are there, even if it's not a busy day. One is really here between Spaceship Earth and then the rest of the park as you start to walk in. And if you can see this, it's actually not crazy, but look at the crowd up there. That's pretty big. And normally, when I've been here for reporting things over the last few weeks, this area has been mainly empty. I'm here about an hour after the park has opened. And normally by this point, it's empty. So I'm a little bit surprised today. I'm excited to see what the wait times look like. I'm gonna pull off in the shade and see what's happening. It's not looking as crazy as I thought it would. Right now, the longest wait, of course, is Test Track. That's no surprise to me. It's one of the most popular rides here in Disney World, especially here in Epcot. It's about 65 minutes right now, so I'm gonna head that way. I'm gonna hop in line, because I do think that will get higher today. I could be wrong, but we're gonna hop that way and see how long it actually takes us. So while I'm over here, one thing I will mention is that even though Epcot doesn't really have like a main street per se, where you can really tell what the crowds are looking like, I actually think Connections Cafe is a great example of what crowds are looking like. So as you can see, they have both sides open right now and it's pretty big. Belt lines are pretty long. I think that's a great indicator of what the parks are gonna look like today. I'm actually not going to stop for coffee science right now. I'll use any excuse to walk through AC and just to be able to smell the coffee is like a bonus for me. So as I'm walking, another great example of a pinch point is right here in this area between Creation Shop and the Connections Cafe slash eatery. Um, right now it's not looking that bad. There's a lot of seating and it's really shaded. So especially in the summertime or if it's raining, this area can get crowded and it can get really hard to move through. Right now it's not looking bad. So I hope that's a good indicator of our day. Another thing is I'm kind of headed into this area to head over to Test Track. One of the most popular rides here in Epcot, if not the most popular ride is of course, Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. So why am I not in line for today? That's because Guardians is actually still only available through the virtual queue or through the lightning lane. But I'm not testing the virtual queue wait times today. I'm testing the full wait times. I will say you can always tell kind of how crowds are gonna look like based on how fast that virtual queue fills up. It's normally within a minute or two. And if crowds are really busy, it's gonna be even less than that. I have made it over to Test Track, presented by Chevrolet, of course. And Test Track is a high-speed adventure where you get to build your own car and put it to the test. It is definitely high-speed. This is one of the fastest rides you can get on in Disney World. You go 64.9 miles an hour at one point. 
super exciting. The wait time does say 65 minutes, so I'm gonna start my timer and hop in line. Alrighty folks, I just made it inside. It only took me about 13 minutes. That's not horrible. And there's AC. I did get here a little bit earlier in the morning, so it wasn't that hot outside. So if you're waiting for this midday, maybe be aware that you do have to wait outside a little bit, but a majority of Test Tracks line is inside. Also, just because y'all know I love to eat, I get hungry all the time. I've been chowing down on some Pop-Tarts. My favorite are the s'mores ones. What are your favorites? I love something sweet in the morning, which might be unhinged. One of my absolute best pro tips in life is that you can bring your own food into Disney World. And if you're like me and you're here all the time, you can't necessarily shell out that cash all the time. Or if you're balling on a budget for your vacation, which I absolutely have done when I vacationed here before, bring your own food, bring your own snacks. You can do lunches and things, but I always need snacks. So bring your own. Pop tots are a great option. Chips are a great option. That has nothing to do with crowds, but it's a good tip. Alrighty, I just hopped off of Test Track. It only took me about 52 minutes, which that's not bad at all. I have waited a much longer time for Test Track. So this, I was very excited about. I do think it's worth the 50 min 52 minutes personally. I think it's such a fun experience and it's the fastest you can go in Disney World, which I think is super fun. Of course, because of that, not everybody is going to super like it. And if you're someone with long hair like I am, maybe consider pulling it back or bringing a hairbrush because it will get tangled. Of course, this is one of the most popular rides here in Disney World. So those long lines are pretty much gonna stick around for most of the day. I think it's really important to remember, you can get in line until nine o'clock or whenever the park closes for that specific day. You can get in line up until that last minute and wait as long as you need to, or as little as you need to. The lines will definitely drop right before the park's close. So that might be the best time for you to get in line for something like Test Track. So another thing I think is important to mention is of course, this park does have early entry just like all of the others, but this is not a park that everything is open for early entry. So for here, the early entry options are Beauty and the Beast Sing Along, Frozen Ever After, Mission Space, Remy's Ratatouille Adventure, Soarin' Around the World, Spaceship Earth, Test Track, and the Seas with Nemo and Friends. So that's not every single ride, that's not every option. However, it is the biggest ride options. So if you have access to that early entry time, definitely utilize it if you're able. And if you don't have access to that time, just remember that the wait times will already have started by the time you're able to get into the park. As we are headed back to grab some coffee for some research and some science, I am headed back to this pinch point between the cafe and uh, creation shop. And as you can see, it's a little bit busier, but still not too bad. And Test Track wasn't a bad wait. So maybe the crowds just look big, I don't know. We're gonna see where they are, but I know where I'm gonna be. And that's over in the Connections Cafe. Apparently with the crowds as I walk in and see them all here. It's for research, baby. All right, coffee obtained. And apparently I really was dying for it because I checked it. Basically, I waited about 15 minutes to get my entire coffee. I was like in the line for 13 minutes and only took them a few minutes to get my coffee. Alrighty, champs. So it is currently the afternoon. Now we are heavily into the afternoon. And how do I know that? Because the wait times are showing it. So I just checked the wait times and the two highest right now, of course, are Remy's 
Ratatouille Adventure. I said that like a question. It's Remy's Ratatouille Adventure. And also Frozen Ever After. Both are sitting at about 90 minutes. So I can really choose whichever one I want to get over with first. Because frankly, when I go for my third line of the day, it'll probably be one of those two. So I think because Frozen is closest, um, it's the first thing I'll hit when I head into the World Showcase, I'll probably head there. It feels amazing today, by the way. The temperatures have really dropped. Of course, it's still warm, but as somebody who is here all summer and basically drowning in her own sweat, apparently, I think it feels great. So here is one of the job breeds in Epcot, right here at the entrance of the World Showcase. And as you can see, a much shorter line than what I just waited in. So at some point today, I am going to mobile order my lunch because of lines like the one we just walked past, especially for festival booths, those lines can get pretty hefty. I've made it to Norway and I did make it over to Frozen Ever After. It is actually bumped up to a 95 minute wait right now so we're gonna see how long this takes us. I'm gonna hop in line and of course start my timer. Frozen Ever After is a super fun boat ride that takes place after Frozen, after the events of Frozen. So you get to see a lot of your favorite characters and there is no height requirement for this one so anyone can enjoy it especially if you're a Quincy and you love a good boat ride. This is probably one of the most popular rides here in Epcot. I know I said that about Test Track because I think that about Test Track too. I would say this one and Test Track could be tied for first uh, as far as lines that you don't need a virtual queue for. And something to be aware of is a lot of the queue outside is directly in the sun. There's not that much shade. So if that's something that might be an issue for you, I maybe would use your early entry access for this ride or I would wait till the end of the night. All right, super right up here. It's still saying 95, and of course I'm thinking around. Do you guys think I give off more of an Elsa energy or an Anna energy? Because I think it depends on the day and how much I've eaten, but also I connect a lot with Sven and Olaf. Let me know what you think. Maybe it's none of those. Maybe I'm a Kristoff. Maybe I'm, I'm an uh, ice harvester. Um, but as I'm standing here, I notice that it says it's a 125 minute wait. <laughs> my goodness i'm roasting it is so warm today and it's not even as hot as it normally is during the summers i am so warm and i am very fair skinned so i know that i got a little bit burnt so if you know that you're waiting in line for frozen outside and it's going to be hot like this sunscreen water fans whatever you can do to make sure you're not getting roasted and burnt highly suggest it okay i'm about to walk inside it took me about 20 minutes to get to this point. Okay, we're about to go into Oaken's store, his Oaken's token store, and sauna, of course, during his big summer blowout. This is technically considered the pre-show for Frozen because he does pop up in and out of the sauna from time to time. Right now it's taken us about 70 minutes, significantly less than 125. Of course, we do still have a little bit of a line through here. Uh, after we walk through Oaken, but technically this is where Disney cuts off that wait time.
off of Frozen and it only took me about 70 minutes. Even after I got through Oaken's Tokens, I flew through the rest of that line. 70 is so much better. It's only 60 minutes now according to Disney, which is really nice. I think this ride is worth 60 to 70 for sure. I think this is such a fun, cute ride. The technology is amazing. It has some of the most up-to-date animatronics of any ride in Disney World. And I think it's a family fun, family friendly ride. So anybody can enjoy it, which I think is the most important part. Here are my shoes. Sorry, you have to see them. But can you see my little Olaf socks? There he is. I'm so obsessed with him. Okay, we are definitely later into the afternoon. It is right around park hop time, so I'm kind of expecting lines to fluctuate because of that. I'm definitely going to be mobile ordering something. Normally when I'm in Epcot, I actually would recommend eating at the festival booths. Um, I think they're more fun, they're unique, and I think the offerings are just a little bit of a higher quality. Plus, although the plates aren't as big, it's a little bit cheaper and you can try a few more items than you normally would if you're eating at a quick service. But today, because it is so crowded, those lines are, they're hefty. So I'm gonna check out what mobile order offerings are here in Epcot. So luckily I can skip long lines like this one. So I will say, um, tonight there is a Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween party going on. So my theory is that a lot of people probably did Epcot during the day today, and they might be doing Magic Kingdom tonight for the party. I know a lot of people who will either not do a park during the day if they're doing Not So Scary, or they'll do a different park, because you basically have the whole day, because Not So Scary doesn't start until six, so you can get a lot of different time at another park before you hop over. So I did check to see what is on mobile order here at Epcot. Epcot only has five options for mobile order, which I thought was surprising considering how much food they have. That's obviously not every single quick service um, here in Epcot. It's very few actually. So luckily for me, one of my favorites is still an option for mobile order. I will of course be grabbing some fish and chips and that's where I'm headed now because I know I'm probably about to get in another long line. And personally, I'd love to eat a little snack before I head in there. So as we continue walking, here is another one of those fun Joffrey options in the America Pavilion. As you can see, this line is also down. Really nobody's over there except maybe one or two couples and families. So of course, I always recommend Joffrey's. It's just gonna be a little bit faster than the Starbucks. All right, and here's my lunch. So I did grab it at the Yorkshire County Fish Shop where you can grab fish and chips, mandarin oranges, Cokes, waters, teas, you know, all the good stuff. They do have a uh, Joffrey's coffee here as well, which you can mobile order, hint, hint, save some time. They do have this awesome seating area here in the back. Because I am having a little bit of a later lunch, there was a spot right as I walked up, but there's not always one, but it's a great little tucked away option in case you don't know where to go or you need some shade for the day. Okay, for my lunch, I just got a lovely, massive piece of white fish with some french fries, of course, fish and chips. I love these fish and chips. This is one of my favorite things here in Epcot. I would eat, I'll eat these every single time I'm here, if I can, you know. Sometimes it's just too hot for fried fish, but not that, I mean, it, it's, it has to be pretty bad for me to not get these. I do put ketchup on mine. <laughs> Although sometimes I just eat it plain. I know Quincy doesn't agree with that and will never agree. Can you get it open? Okay, maybe we won't start on that side. I can't get it. Okay. The absolutely 10 out of 10. So white, so flaky. Have a bite, enjoy that. The fish is so fresh and the bread is so flaky. Also, because Epcot does have such amazing food, of course they probably don't have some great options as well. There are some definite misses here in Epcot. And if you want to know what we think you should avoid, go check out the worst snacks in Epcot video where all of my lovely team is gonna tell you what you definitely should not spend your money on. All right, we are completely full on fish and chips. I've just checked the wait times. It is well after a park hopping hour. I just checked the wait times. 
And unfortunately for us, Remy is down. That was kind of my, what I thought would be my third option today. So Remy is down, but that means I'm gonna head over to Soren because Soren is our next highest wait time at 50 minutes. And I'm actually pretty excited. I love the Soren queue because it's all inside. So let's head that way. So unlike Magic Kingdom, but similarly to Animal Kingdom, Epcot does not have parades. So that's not something you're gonna have to take into account when you're talking about crowds here in Disney World. They are similar though to Animal Kingdom, like I said, in the way that they do have little pop-up shows. They have a ton of entertainment scattered throughout Epcot and that can draw little crowds that might kind of throw your day off as far as just moving around the parks. But overall, you don't really have to get in line. There's not gonna be such a big crowd that you can't experience those shows. You always, of course, need to check the times on My Disney Experience for things like the Mariachi Cobra, one of Quincy's favorites. It's a really fun show. They have so many shows are scattered around Epcot that way. But of course, check My Disney Experience. No need to really stake out a spot. Just make sure you're there right on time. Here's another great example of one of those awesome shows. And it is Alberta Falls here at the Mill Stage, right into Canada. Just some Epcot fun facts for you. It was announced at D23 this year that uh, by 2029, they are hoping to replace all of Epcot uh, with walls. They're going to be calling it Walcott. Super excited to see that development. You can see they've already done so much working towards that goal. So really looking forward to those developments. You never know with jokes. You never know. And this was a bad one. I genuinely will never get tired of seeing the monorail go through Epcot. It's one thing that I wish went through every single park that highway in the sky. Uh, pro tip, because I'm about to do this myself, when you're about to get long lines, and you know you are, always go to the restroom. The land has some great restrooms that are kind of tucked in the back, so it's not super crowded, and they're normally pretty clean. All right, bathroom break, check. Also, if you're curious, it's here. <laughs> After you walk in to the land, which of course, the land pavilion is one of my favorite spots here in Epcot. There is Sunshine Seasons, Garden Grill, Awesome Planet, which is actually a really fun, quick show, uh, Living with the Land, and of course, the where we're headed, Soarin' Around the World. Soarin', of course, is one of my favorites here in Epcot. To me, it's like an Epcot staple. Um, it is a flight simulator ride. It's a ton of fun, and of course, what else do you do but soar around the world? You get to see a lot of really fun, iconic places, and then end up right here, back at Epcot, you do need to be at least 40 inches to ride, but it's a ton of fun. Right now it's saying it's 50 minutes. I'm gonna start my timer and then hop in line. I will say I absolutely love the Soren line because it's all inside. The whole thing's inside and I love that. It just means that no matter how long you're waiting, you're not in the sun, which I can super appreciate, especially with a ride like Soren. There is a height requirement, but it's so family friendly and this is just a great place to hang out and get out of the sun for a while. Also, there's games on the wall. If you have the Disney Play app, you can play those. There you go. That's a heck of a lot less than 50, so I'm really excited about that. So that was it for Soren. It only took me 25 minutes. I think that's amazing for Soren. Of course, I am a childhood. That was like the biggest ride when I came here. 
um, in Epcot. So like, I love Soarin', it's one of my favorites. I think the popularity has gone down as newer rides have opened, but I don't think that's justified. I think Soarin' is still worth a long wait, in my opinion. And 25 minutes isn't a long wait at all. It is half the time of what they said it would be, so I'm very pleased. I think it's so neat, and I always wonder if they're going to redo the ending of the Epcot section uh, once the middle of Epcot is redone. I kind of would love to see them do that, even though it would make me sad to see it go. But I really like it. I love Soren. Happily, we'll wait 25 minutes for that. I think anybody could like it. It's neat. It has amazing smells that I have candles up in my home. Absolutely 10 out of 10 for me. And of course, throughout the day, remember, G Plus is always an option for any of the parks that you go to. I don't necessarily think that it's necessary here in Epcot. Of course, we have done a video on that, so if you're interested, you can check out that video. It's called, Would We Pay to Skip the Lines in Epcot? Spoiler, the answer is You can go see why and see a little bit of our science that we did there. So overall, the end of, it's the end of the day. We've been on a few rides, we've had some lunch, and I definitely think that the crowds are here. And I think that's probably because the holidays are starting to ramp up. So if you're coming anytime during October, November, or December, really be prepared for those holiday crowds. This is not as bad as the summertime, not even close. But as we get closer to those specific holidays, like the day of and the weeks leading up, of course, it's gonna get busier. But I'm pleased. The wait times, I waited less than every single posted wait time today which has not always been accurate in my experience. So this is me, it's me being pleased, me check marking, me feeling like I should do a little dance, and maybe I will. If you liked this video, make sure to like and subscribe. Now go watch Quincy and I have a no plan day here in Epcot.